All right, let's get going. So, hi everyone. I'm Jamie Dunbar, and this is Dr. Ian Dunbar. What will we be talking about today? Dad? Well, uh, <laughs> we're going to be talking about no money down real estate. <laughs> oh, get rich quick! <laughs> no, sorry. We're talking about dog training. Mm -hmm. Like uh, what kind of dog quick, training? Quick, easy, effective, and and enjoyable, fun. Mm -hmm. I do like fun. Do you like fun? I yeah. I, I think that. Nearly everything you do, we can we can make it a pain, a drag, boring, mm -hmm. or we can have fun doing it, and that's all my is my way about learning. So training, mm -hmm. yeah. So why are we going to be talking about that? Well, because a lot of people have problems with it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, people. I guess they they just don't know. It's not you know we come down on dog owners a lot, say they're irresponsible. I say no, no one's telling them, mm -hmm. and all the people who could be telling them, the breeder, the vet, the Dog trainers are not getting out there proactively. Mm -hmm. So I'd like them to know there are quick and easy methods, which are highly effective and a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. And it's going to, you know, change your dog's life forever. Mm -hmm. It's why we do webinars, yeah. right? To so what happens with, if people don't get the, uh, the dog training information that they need? Well, it can be bad. I mean, simple behavior problems, you know, it ruined the relationship and the dog is progressively ostracized first, you know, outside and then into a garage or basement. And mm -hmm. then the relationship sours and off it goes to the humane society. And, and for a lot of dogs, euthanasia, I mean, simple behavior problems are the number one terminal illness for domestic dogs and cats, hmm. all because the owners didn't know how easy it is. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. But you think we can uh, prevent some of those problems? I know we can. We've been doing it for a while, 45 years. <laughs> All right. Okay. So who is this webinar for? Well, anyone who has the joy of sharing their life with a dog mm -hmm. or two dogs uh, or a bunch of dogs, as is my case at the moment. Okay. And um, for dog trainers mm -hmm. that I think a lot of dog trainers forget that their client, the dog owner, is not a trainer. They have nowhere near their level of experience or expertise. And so they're often talking, you know, complicated, time-consuming techniques. And it's too much for the owners. They don't have that skill set. Mm -hmm. And so I like to net, let trainers know about quick and easy techniques so they can then try them out in their classes and pass them along to their clients. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I think what's exciting for me about this is a lot of times um, you've kind of historically been kind of a dog trainer's trainer. You've instructed a lot of dog trainers um, how to be good dog trainers. But I think today we're really trying to reach out to just regular people as well, right? Yeah, it's a major, I think, change in the direction of our, our business, if we can call it that, that I concentrated on dog professions for a long time, um, first dog trainers and then um, veterinarians and then uh, the pet retail industry then humane societies and mm -hmm. um, and now we want to go directly to um, dog owners mm -hmm. that the the excitement they get you know that they, they don't have the proactive inhibition that say a, a trainer has proactive meaning that inhibition new learning of resistance new techniques. to new things yes uh -huh. is is resisted more if you have some knowledge of the subject right. but when you're a, a tabla rosa mm -hmm. and have no idea what to do and the puppy's driving you crazy they are so grateful mm -hmm. like i met uh, you know a mother and daughter on the street with a little golden poo totally out of control mm -hmm. and it got sick so it had to leave puppy class and uh -huh. i was chatting to him i said well do this and this let me show you uh -huh. And they couldn't believe it. This puppy uh -huh. that was charging me, jumping up, licking my face, now sat nicely mm -hmm. and I scratched its chest and tranquilo. Sounds like you got quick results. Um, and well, yeah, the joy. Yeah. I mean, it really is to see. Otherwise, I, I mean, I've been around a lot of golden doodles and if they aren't trained to sit and be calm, I mean, mm -hmm. you've got 15 years to 17 years to endure of out of control over the top hyperactivity and mm -hmm. rambunctiousness. So it sounds like if you guys at home know a dog, then you're in the right place, right? This this webinar is for it's anyone who it will be has very dog. very informative, um, and we hope you have a lot of fun. Yeah. All right, so let's get down to brass tacks. What specifically are we going to be covering today? We're going to talk about three of the biggest myths in dog training. Mm, let me go to the whiteboard. 
Three big miss. Three big miss. All right. And then what what are we going to do with those three big miss? Well, we we will chat about them and we'll discuss whether they actually are true or not. Mm -hmm. And then we'll give some simple exercises that owners can try at home to prove to themselves that these methods do work. Okay. So these exercises, they are for the people at home. Yeah, yeah. The whole point about dog training is it should be in the home. You uh-huh. know, you go to class to get guidance from a trainer to make sure it's going right, but you actually train the dog in real life. Now, um, when when do we want these people to start training their dogs? Um, well, they can do it while they listen to the webinar if they like. Um, I mean, I can or give them, you can wait till the end. Well, I can give them if they can multitask. No, I no, mean, no, no multitasking. Okay, oh, all right. Focus. So as soon as this webinar is done, get as training. As it's That's over. what we want. We yeah. want to give you some exercises that you can start training your dog as soon as possible. So um, why should people listen to you? Um, well, I hope because they can have a good time. I mean, I do have, I guess, purely uh, for entertainment, conventionally a little experience in the subject. I've been mm-hmm. doing it for about 45 years. Um, I grew up on a farm and I was lucky. My, my grandpa Uh, classically conditioned and trained all the farm animals. I mean, by the time I was five, I'd been classically conditioning calves, you know, Uh and I had uh, an 80 cow recall and a 200 chicken recall. An 80 cow recall. Does anyone out there have an 80 cow recall? It's so easy. You Uh say, come on, come on. That's the cow call or chick, 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 chick. And they all come running. Why? Because they get food. Uh huh. Because you got to get the chicken all in their shed at night so the fox doesn't kill them all. That makes sense. And you know, he taught me to touch an animals and earned right uh, and earned mm-hmm. privilege, not a right. Mm-hmm. Um, that really stuck in my mind. And then I went to the vet college, came to California, got a PhD in um, animal behavior. Mm-hmm. And um, I like how you just kind of glazed over just went to vet college just uh like like one yeah, does well it was uh, the royal veterinary college <laughs> i should say it's royal. the royal veterinary college yeah um i mean now it's 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 history and i have lovely memories of it at the time of course i yeah. savored I and mean, this is london in the 60s but, but i think was, it does give you a unique perspective that you know a lot of people will give you dog training advice but i don't think a lot of people have a veterinary background they are you know they went to veterinary college have a academic background you know they got a phd I think that kind of sets you apart in a lot of ways, makes you special. I think it's, uh, there's a number of us who are, I think, pretty high powered scientists. And that's important because that's what allows you to test mm-hmm. is what you're doing effective. Because mm-hmm. if it's not effective, it's not training. Yeah. I mean, training is changing effective. behavior. We're, we're all about effective here. Yes. And, um, but then I, I guess it came when I started, um, Sirius, the uh, puppy school, and we've trained, it's over 110,000 puppies now. So what was, so, well, we see what goes right. Uh huh. And we see what goes wrong. Well, I say we get to it. Yep. So we get to this first myth. I think some people are antsy and eager to get to them, get to the goods. All right. Myth one. What's myth one, dad? Myth one. What is myth one? Oh, if you need to remind her. Yes, I know. (laughs) Um, Dog training doesn't work or it's boring or it's just downright unpleasant. Unpleasant. That sounds miserable. So if that's the myth, that means uh, dog training does work and it's uh, fun and interesting. Well, not always. Okay. Dog training can work and it is fun if you're using the right techniques, but there are so many techniques out there that don't actually work. Hmm. So people are learning class and training away, but the dog's behavior is not changing. Mm -hmm. And we do still have a lot of trainers around using aversive techniques. Mm -hmm. And if we're being unpleasant in training and it doesn't work, well, that just ain't right. Mm -hmm. So we always have to test not only is dog training working, but Mm -hmm. how quickly is it working? Mm -hmm. How quickly in one session can we improve the dog's sit stay? So in puppy class one, from 0.2 of a second Mm -hmm. to what, 15 seconds, 30 seconds? Most people don't know, but I do because I always time it. Mm -hmm. I time it every week. So you'd say this myth actually has some truth to it. There is a lot of dog training out there that doesn't work and it's not fun. Yeah, I don't think people, I actually don't think there's any trainer who's as clinically, objectively, 
quantifying the process as, as me. Mm -hmm. I'm really interested in time and trials to criterion, and it sounds very clinical and boring, but it ain't because that means the owners love it because now it's quick. Yeah. And and I and you know me with technology, I have no patience for it at all. Mm -hmm. I want it to work now. And yeah, that's, that's a phrase I've are. heard you say so many times, time and trials to criterion, which I think is worth pausing on for a moment for people who maybe aren't familiar. It's just the notion of measuring how successful. Yeah, you you right? set a goal. So my goal always is a very simple stuff: a one minute sit stay, mm -hmm. um, a a three minute down stay. Let's just use uh, easy. And the question is, how many minutes of training does it take me to get there? Mm -hmm. So we test the dog first to see how long he stays. Then we start training, mm -hmm. and we have a record, and we may get to it in one session. So with an adult dog. I would expect to get there in one session. Right. But the point being, if, you, if you're not measuring, then you don't know if your training is good, right? No, and that's or silly effective. because they said training is about behavioral change. Mm -hmm. And so why not document it? Because this is the best way for trainers to sell their business. If they, you know, I always tell people, remember the first sit stay you did in this room, 0.2 of a second? Mm hmm and now we're up to what? One minute and 45 seconds. Wow. Are you in the right class with mm -hmm. the right trainer? Or at home when they're training, nothing is more motivational than breaking your personal best. Mm -hmm. And if you keep numbers, you know it. What's the quickest recall you've done in a dog park, mm -hmm. you know, from say over 30 yards away? Use right. a stopwatch because then you know when to celebrate and let the dog know that yeah. you didn't just get it right. You got it really right. You did a good job. Mm -hmm. But most people are like, good dog, treat. I mean, come on. So how about you know? an example of um, something where dog training isn't effective, where people uh, are using methods or they're, they're changing their dog's behavior, but it's not really working? Or well, I guess the classic is, you know, say going for a walk to the dog park and doing a recall. Mm -hmm. And when you watch people, um, it's actually funny. I mean, it's not just that they're getting it wrong. It's they are totally wrong. Uh -huh. You know, I, I don't mean to laugh. I'm, I'm sorry. Don't be upset with me. But, you know, what they do is they first they say, you want to go walk this? And the dog goes crazy. They haven't even got out the door yet. And they excited their dog. So it's bouncing around like an idiot. Then they put it on the leash, uh -huh. which is a massive reward. Then they go out the door, jump down the sidewalk like this. And every step they take has to be one of the biggest rewards in urban dogdom, mm -hmm. reinforcing pulling on leash. Mm -hmm. okay. Then they get to the park and let it off leash. But that's difficult because the dog's so excited, bouncing, they get it off leash and it disappears. Then what do they do? Nothing. They let the dog have the best time ever by itself, running around, playing with other dogs and sniffing their rear ends. Mm -hmm. Then they call it back to go home. So if they say, puppy, come here. He says, no, I'm having a good time. Come here. Come here. Get over here. And the dog uh -huh. says, I, I don't think so. You know, we've talked about this anger management before that, you, you know, when you get angry, I know it's bad news to come up to you because if I do, what do you do? You grab me and say, don't you ever do that again. Mm -hmm. It's just downhill, downhill, downhill. Mm -hmm. it, it's all wrong, 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 wrong. Oh, if yeah. they sat back and thought about it. Which it would be funny if it didn't frustrate and upset people so much. <laughs> Right. And the dog gets really abused in the process. I mean, right. I, I think and upset the dog. Yeah. You know, some dog. of the cruelest things to do to dogs. I think grabbing it and shouting in the face mm -hmm. is really at the top for me. Giving it ugly face, as I call it. Yeah. And, and some parents do it with kids, you know, and it's it so ain't if, right. If that's the 180 degree opposite <laughs> uh, approach to teaching a dog to come when called, what is the what's uh and, you know, how would you do it? Do you have a story about... Um... Well, yeah, I, I have loads of stories. I, oh, I mean, do you? <laughs> my, you know me, yeah. I, I used to teach my stories um, because it's easier for them, people, to remember the point. Um, my favorite recall story, park story, was a, um, a Doberman in Japan when I was filming my TV program there. Um, I had a dog segment on Dash Village, the most watched program on Japanese TV. Mm-hmm. And I had some very, very royal fans out there who invited oh. me to tea one day, Ooh, which is kind of nice. nice. Anyway, so this Doberman, I go to the house. He's crazy, wrecked the house. So stuff a Kong with some food, put it down, solves that problem. So we ended the morning filming early, 
and the crew was busy in the afternoon, so they said, well, tomorrow we'll go to the dog park. So I turn up at 6 a.m. Oh, my word. And um, I said to them, you know, well, how many walks has he been? Oh, he's never left the house, this dog. Uh I'm thinking, oh. And I'm thinking, well, you know, Japanese dog park, you know, size of this living room. No, it was huge. It was thin, but really long. I mean, Uh the dogs could get so far away, you could barely see them. So I said, so he's not been in a dog park? No. So I said, all right, here's how we're going to do it. I'm going to do a little training on leash. Um, so he knows I'm a nice guy because he barely knows me. I uh-huh. let him know I've got some food treats because uh-huh. how else do I communicate to him or lure him? Mm-hmm. Then we're going to let him off leash and ignore him for half an hour because there ain't no way we're going to catch him in half an hour. <laughs> so the first step is just the first half hour. Is yeah. So I did wash. some quick, you know, come uh-huh. sit, treat, come sit, treat, come sit, treat, sit down, sit, stand down, stand like this. Then we said, go play. And off he went. And this dog... It was like a gazelle, a happy gazelle, but goofy, going doing, 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 and he ran up the park. He wasn't even playing. Mega moment in his life, Well, he wasn't even playing with the other dogs. He was just Mm -hmm. bouncing and running. You know, he absolutely loved it. And then I went and had coffee. (laughs) That was the other reason I thought we wouldn't train him. So then we came back. He still wasn't paying any attention to us. So I said to the owners, um, a, a husband and wife and a baby. I said, look, don't you try and catch him. So this is, you've got to know how to do this. Once I've caught him and trained him, then y- you can do it. Mm-hmm. So I'm trying to get his attention, but he's still running back and forth. So since I'm there, I started, you know, I tossed a treat to him. He just goes sailing by, uh-huh. you know, 25 yards away. But this little beagle saw me throw this treat, you know. Mm-hmm. So he trots up, gets the treat and looks at me like this. And then comes trotting up to me. So I start training the beagle. Mm-hmm. And the doby sort of sees this. And I find it's a great ploy. If a dog's blowing you off, start sitting there just hand-feeding <laughs> treats to another dog, <laughs> you know. And um, eventually the doby sees me, so I toss another treat, which he sees, and he gets it. Mm-hmm. And then I say my, my word, gotcha, because that means... He's taken my treat. I now own his brain. It's just a matter of time. Uh-huh. So I toss him another treat. And a little trick here is you don't toss it between you and the dog. Okay. Because the dog knows the precise distance he dare come. So you toss one bit of kibble over the head, then three bits of kibble just enhance with a little freeze-dried liver powder in front of him. So kibble over the head to increase the distance. All right. And then live it, live it, live it. Oh, there's advanced so, kibble yeah. tossing. So technique. he gets uh, distracted to go away for the kibble, but then rewarded heavily for approaching. Eventually comes close. Mm-hmm. Do not move your hands. Mm-hmm. If you do that, you'll take off. So you bring him into you like this. So he takes food from your hand. Then you bring it back. Mm-hmm. And I do it behind my body like this. So now he can't see this hand. Then I say, gotcha. Uh-huh. Treat, 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 treat. Go play. And then I walk away that from him. It makes an impression, play. doesn't it? It does. And what's the dog doing? He's following me. Uh-huh. So then it's come here again. Treat, come here, treat, come here, treat. Gotcha. Treat, 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 go play. That's it. Now it's come, sit, treat, go play. Come, sit, treat, go play. The reward we're using here is go play, uh-huh. which was the distraction. Uh huh. Yeah. So okay. now we've turned it into a reward. So now I go and stand next to the owners and say, right, you have the treats, you call the dog, I'll do the backup. Uh huh. So they call and they say, you know, puppy come. Although this is a two year old Doberman. And then I say, puppy come. Uh huh. And so the dog comes. And that, that's how you teach children. Uh huh. Okay. They say it first. Puppy, come here. Then you say, puppy, come here. Uh-huh. But you must be standing behind them. Okay. Otherwise the dog will come to you. And then that's it. And I say, you come back to the park tomorrow. You'll probably wait 15 minutes before you start training. Uh huh. The next day, just five minutes. And within the week, you walk in the park and say, sit, good dog. Okay, Go play, so come here. Are we telling uh, the people at home who have no recall to take their dog to a giant park and let it off leash? They can if you want, but that's the worst possible training scenario. Okay. But I'm a believer in meeting the beast and whatever it is you're scared of. So that's just an option. Do it. But if we want to set these people up for success, I what? would do it in the best possible training scenario. Okay. So this is going to be exercise you, one, right? So this is the exercise so they train. Listen carefully. We yeah. want you to, if, if anyone out there, if anyone has trouble with their recall with their dog, you got to listen carefully because we are going to tell you how to fix that starting today. Like, so, as soon as this webinar is over, we want you to give this a shot. Number one, don't feed your dog from a bowl. 
Yeah. What a waste of lures and rewards because mm-hmm. you've proven as yet you can't train your dog. So let's take the shortcut. Let's use food and then we'll totally phase it out. As we did in the worst possible training scenario, we use food to make it work. But then we ended up come sit, go play, come sit, go play. We don't need the food anymore because playing with other dogs is bigger. So we're going to start off with food hand feeding it. So weigh out the food in the morning, put it in a container, regular kibble. Don't use treats. That'll be the slippery slope of bribing. Okay. Use kibble, but you give it to the dog for classical conditioning and training. You, the dog, the kibble in your kitchen. Come kibble. Come kibble. Come kibble. Come that sit sounds kibble. Really simple. Come. It's so simple. It's ridiculous. Just a one step recall. Okay. Step back. Come here. Sit kibble come here sit take the collar give the kibble come here sit okay so it's changing a little bit first it was come kibble yeah then it was come sit kibble well first it's just take the kibble but now i go back a step Uh uh-huh and say come well of course the dog's going to come i've got the kibble yeah so first it's just come kibble come kibble, then come sit kibble so come sit kibble come Mm -hmm. sit kibble then come sit wait a bit hold on to the kibble so it's come sit stay kibble Come sit, take the collar, stay kibble. Mm -hmm. As soon as you take the collar, you let the dog sniff the food. But the Mm -hmm. longer you hold on to the food, the longer the dog will sniff, look at you, and sit, stay. Mm -hmm. Okay? Then we will go for two steps backing up. Mm -hmm. Two steps, come sit, kibble, come Come sit, sit, kibble. kibble. Then three steps. Come mm-hmm. sits. Then we need oh, a bigger room. Do we, we stop grabbing the collar? Or we no. Uh, I so come always, sit. I want take the collar. You see, grabbing the collar makes dogs run, mm-hmm. and it's the number one reason why people get bitten. Mm-hmm. It's not a stray dog biting strangers out there. Mm-hmm. It's the number one cause for a dog bite is when a member of the family grabs the dog's collar. So we want to train the dog to like like having collar. the collar grabbed. And as soon as you got the collar, you've got the dog. Right. They're not running away. Yeah. And it's an absolute sign, like an obedience competition in the recall. If the dog doesn't sit close to you, you have to touch the dog on the head. Mm-hmm. You go, I remember once with Omaha, he's about a yard in front of me. And I sort of go, Dum. and I just did it. And the, the yeah. judge said, okay, <laughs> you pass. I okay. Very close. Let me recap for the people. So the first step, don't feed from a food bowl. You want to Use their regular kibble in training. I noticed someone was asking, no treats. Yes, no treats. No the kibble. Treat. You don't need, it'll is become the treat. a treat. If you hand feed it, it right. becomes a treat. The dog's not eating food from a food bowl. He's not getting hot dogs and chicken and, and stuff elsewhere. The second note, I saw someone saying that they couldn't do this because they feed raw diet. And I would say, if you don't have a good recall, then that's more important than, than raw diet. Well, I would change to, change to a freeze dried raw diet. Mm-hmm. But. But something easy to hand feed. Yeah. But with that, I would break it into tiny little bits. So like if you took something like Rawble, mm-hmm. you know, and the kibble's this size, I would break that into 10 because you've got to give a lot of water with it. Mm-hmm. Okay. And so it's dry and you give it a little bit of food treat, a little bit of kibble like that. But the joy comes from sniffing it. Mm-hmm. So you let the dog sniff and say, oh, yeah, this is yummy, yeah. isn't it? And then they eat these micro bits of kibble and go... Mm, mm, yeah. mm. Because so the, once you've got your hand food, your food that you can feed by hand, that is. Yeah. Uh, you go in your kitchen with your dog and you give the dog a piece of food. Mm-hmm. And then you take a step back. The dog comes to you. You give them another piece of food. Then you increase the kind of complexity. They come. You have them sit. Give them a piece of food. Yeah. Then you take another step back. Have them sit. You take their collar. And then you give them a piece of food. First time I take the collar, I go, treat, treat, treat. Oh, That's okay. the gotcha moment. Uh-huh. I want so the they dog. really love getting I want the dog to go, take it, take it. It's right there. Go, go take my collar. <laughs> okay. Right okay. Okay. okay, thanks. <laughs> and so then once you've got, that's the basic step, you, you have a one-step recall, and then you can start to. Now we longer. will gradually expand distance by going into bigger rooms, mm-hmm. and then in your yard, and then a friend's yard, another friend's yard. Then we'll increase the distractions, mm-hmm. other people there, two other dogs there, three other dogs there, and then the most difficult, one other dog, because now the only dog it's going to annoy is mm-hmm. yours. Or what about the most difficult? And- a pack of squirrels runs through. Um, I still do it, yeah, but yeah. I, no, I'm saying that, I mean, they would difficult. be silly squirrels if they actually came down to the <laughs> ground. But, um, I remember uh, training, taking a friend's uh, puppy. He said, it goes banshee crazy when it sees squirrels. So I said, yeah. well, where do you have squirrels? He said, yeah, right down to this part of the park. So we went there, had a 30 foot line. I staked the dog 
And I just let him do his thing for 20 minutes, and then we trained him. Yeah. With all these squirrels. The guy used to the squirrel. It gave yeah, him time. So. Just, the dogs need time. Okay. You know, so, to do things like that. If anyone at home have trouble with their dogs, recall. And if you do, are you going to go to your kitchen later today with your dog and work on it? Because this is how you fix it. It starts simple. It doesn't sound, you know, it doesn't sound that amazing, but that's the steps that you're going to have to take to get to the point where you can get your dog to come when called. Right. Yeah, training always starts in the kitchen, then your living room and yard. However, I hope a lot of you go to the park. I'm doing this and um, troubleshooting a lot of dogs now that are assistance dogs in training. All right, we'll work on it. And a lot of them are second career dogs, say, from uh, being trained for the blind but didn't make it. So you've got a lot of dogs that are steady, but as soon as you let them off leash in the park, they go mm. crazy. Right. And so I just go in and in one session put a recall, a park recall on the dogs. Mm -hmm. And it, it's fun because they are so out of control when you start. And we go into the park with a really crazy dog when he sees these other dogs playing. It's kind of embarrassing. Right. But we come out of the park with a trained dog. And another trick, when you come out of the park, then turn around, sit your dog, go back in again, sit your dog, say oh, go yeah. play. And then practice going because the exciting right. moment, but at the same time, the don't park. be too excited about going to the, like, you don't want to go to the park until you've got a good recall in your kitchen, right? Either or. Uh -huh. You see, you can approach training from two ends. You plunge yourself in the worst possible scenario. Mm -hmm. I want to give another example. But we want to set later. people at home up for success. Then do it in your kitchen. Okay. One step recall. <laughs> we want to make yeah. it easy for you guys. Because you, I think you take for granted your skill. You know, like, it's easy for you to forget how much but at any rate let's move on to myth number two no i want i want to rebut that okay i, I mean i am not a great dog trainer there's mm -hmm. you know so many trainers out there and probably listening now who are much better at training with me mm -hmm. the difference is i'm very objective about what i do and i never give up okay and, th and that is a big secret if a, if a dog doesn't got a recall i'm going to teach him a recall because this is too silly for words mm -hmm. if he hasn't got a stay he's going to have a super stay all right but, but those my, are unique characteristics my, to you but they are unique oh. but as a dog trainer no i don't have the patience right that's why i often go i forget the kitchen and go straight into the worst possible scenario. <laughs> okay <laughs> moving along moving i don't along. think you guys okay. should do that right. yeah <laughs> Okay, myth two. <laughs> okay. You know what myth two is, Dan? Yes, I don't have the time or the skill uh -huh. to train my dog. So if that's the myth, then what does that mean? That means um, you have the time and the skill. Well, right? again, no, not necessarily. It, it all depends on the techniques. Uh -huh. And a lot of training techniques, I mean, let's take, say, clicker training. It takes forever. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about on-leash training. Okay. It takes forever. People okay. who train with shock collars, it takes forever. It's meant to be a quick fix. What about skill? Do those methods take skill? Oh, my word. These mm. require the highest skill set of all. You've got to understand how animals learn, uh -huh. and you need exquisite timing, and you have to be consistent. Okay. For my techniques, you can be totally inconsistent, have rubbishy timing, uh -huh. um, but the dogs are going to get trained up quickly. Okay. I mean, I've really thought this out, trying to see the dog's point of view, training is a pleasant experience, and the owner's point of view, quick mm -hmm. and easy. Uh-huh. Okay, so do you so have it depends any on the technique. Specific example of a technique that is uh, doesn't take much skill, doesn't take much time. Um, yeah, and strangely enough... And let me, let me take off our little piece of paper and reveal that everyone does, in fact, have a skill... And it's really, oh, yeah? What's that? it's really not training that takes you know, this time. is really high tech stuff, Jeremy. <laughs> this, uh, well, I know that you're afraid of technology. Well, well, most people have, have like slides that flash up on the uh, screen. I wouldn't want to scare the talent. Well, and that's what failed for Kelly in the conference this morning this, yeah, down in Mexico. I don't think no. it's going to fail unless it bursts into flames. Anyway, it's got to be quick. Otherwise, the owners probably won't do it. It's mm -hmm. got to be easy, otherwise they can't. Mm -hmm. And strangely, some of the easiest techniques are also the most effective. Okay. So um, what about? Well, like auto shaping is probably the easiest. That basically all you have to do is set up the situation, mm -hmm. and the dog all but trains itself. Well, it sounds too good to be true. Um, it is. And I remember the day I, I thought of my first sort of practical auto shaping mm -hmm. routine. And it was for a dog that was destroying a house at a, a lecture at UCLA, the UCLA extension. And the owner of the dog who sat in the front row, everything I suggested 
you know, mm-hmm. chew toys that tried them, don't work, doesn't like them, not food. Much. It just went on and on and on, you know, mm-hmm. yes, but before every reply. And I got kind of exasperated, but I maintained because I'm lecturing and Dr. Dunbar has lots of patience. Mm-hmm. Ian has zero. Mm-hmm. And I said, then why don't you stuff the Kong with food? And as I said it, I thought, oh, my word. And and my brain was racing. I was lecturing slowly to them, but my Uh brain was like a starburst thinking, and this and then this will happen. And so basically, you don't feed the dog out of the bowl. You wait out in the morning. You use a bunch to teach your dog to come in the kitchen. Uh Uh-huh. Okay. And for classical conditioning, so your dog loves children and men and strangers. The rest, you just moisten and you stuff into chew toys, hollow chew toys, mm-hmm. made of natural products and hollow. So good old uh, marrow bones, um, Kongs, just one of the best on the market, the old squirrel dude, the big kahuna football, mm-hmm. biscuit balls for those of you feeding wet, slippery, raw diet and uh-huh. so on. And you then give it to the dog. Now, what will happen? Within seconds, the dog will be lying down. Uh-huh. They sniff the Kong, say, and then they try to get the food out of it. Yeah. Well, the Kong rolls away. Uh-huh. So they put their paw, here's the Kong, and they put their wrist over it like this. Well, as soon as they do that, their elbows on the ground and their butts in the air. Uh-huh. Within a few more seconds, they'll be lying down. Uh-huh. So as they work on the Kong, they're lying down. So every piece of food they get out will uh-huh. reinforce the dog for chewing the chew toy. Okay lying down okay and not barking okay we're we're just eliminating instead it rewards the dogs for you know chewing the chew toy not other pieces of furniture lying down not running around like an idiot and jiggling its bladder and you know (laughs) rectum around (laughs) and not barking recreationally Uh uh-huh okay and so we it's it's the probably the easiest way to reprogram the dog's brain in the shortest amount of time Mm -hmm. recommended every time you know an owner gets a a puppy or adopts an adult dog Mm -hmm. um with puppies it takes about a week to totally reprogram the brain with adult dogs it's one two or three days Mm -hmm. i I think i said i'm babysitting a dog here and he's a very active dog very early riser this is the third day in Uh, he's got it now he has a different bedroom. The doors are open. Zuzu's on my bed. Uh-huh. He has a king size bed next door. He has to stay on that bed until the alarm goes off. Oh, wow. Well, this morning, yeah, I had a feeling something. I look up. He's standing by the door looking at me. I said, Lass, it's eight o'clock on your bed. <laughs> he disappears on the bed. The alarm goes off. And I said, Lazaretto, come in. He comes <laughs> flying on the bed, licking him. What have you? Three days, he's got my routine. Yeah. And we're getting up probably three hours later than, you know, Kelly does. Mm-hmm. So it takes about three days to reprogram an adopted dog's brain. Mm-hmm. And, and the, it's like the most important, if you ask me the question, what's the most important advice you would give to dog owners? I'd say, well, let, oh, let me do that. Well, yeah. what's the most important advice you'd give to dog owners? It would be don't feed out of a food bowl. Okay. Hand feed, classical conditioning and teaching manners. Stuff the rest into hollow chew toys and let the dog eat that way. Mm -hmm. Give him one uh, in the morning for brekkie. Give him one if you're leaving for work. Mm -hmm. Give him one when you get home. And it's a much healthier way to eat, you know, physiologically and psychologically. Uh Uh But it trains the dog all these good behaviors to be calm, enjoy little quiet moments. And this sort of dog is not going to freak out when left at home alone. You know, Mm -hmm. anxiety won't develop when they get to be, say, five to eight months old. Right. Which and, I think is, I mean, that's the, the thing about the chew toy is it allows you to train the dog when you're not, not there, there. Right. So yeah. like if you have problems with your dog that occur when you're not there, there's not a lot of training techniques that. Yeah. And, and, and when I first thought of it, the, the climate was, how can I punish my dog for misbehaving when I'm not there? Mm-hmm. And that's quite a poser. And we found some interesting um not too scary punishments, but it, man, what a rigmarole. And then this comes in a blinding flash. We're asking the wrong question. Mm-hmm. The question should be, how can I set it up so my dog gets it right? And then how can I reward the dog when I'm mm-hmm. left at home alone? Mm-hmm. And the answer is just obvious. You know, it gets back to what I say about asking questions. Mm-hmm. 
Often when you ask a question, you realize that's a really dumb question. Maybe it's the wrong question. Then you ask the right question and you know the answer already. Mm -hmm. It's like people who say, um, how can I stop my dog from jumping up at the front door? I say, well, how would you like him to greet people at the front door? You know, standing on tippy toe with a silver tray and glasses of sherry. <laughs> and, and they say, no. I said, well, how would you like him to greet people? And then they say, well, I guess to sit, I guess. I say, that's a really good idea. The solution is that simple. However, you can't train the dog to do it, can you? That's because you're always trying to train him when he's excited because someone's at the front door. So mm -hmm. what you do is you have a party and invite all these people around and everyone who comes, you work with the dog, but then they have to leave through the back door, go out into the street, come to the front door again. Mm -hmm. By the fourth or fifth re-entry, the dogs are now picture perfect. Yeah. You've got to troubleshoot the same stimulus yeah. over and over. Okay, so if we say um, exercise two, though, is uh, stuffing the chew toy, it sounds like step one, get rid of the food bowl. Step two, measure out the food. So you're just using the regular food. Regular food. We're yeah. not adding extra food to their diet. So if you're concerned about feeding the dog too much, this is no. the amount of food they would get from their bowl. Because right? you weigh it out in the morning. And so initially, you just put dry food in the, the Kong and give it to the dog. So it comes out easily. Okay. What would be like the next step? Well, then you make it harder to get out. Like uh -huh. um, you get bits of kibble that are wider than the opening. Okay. So I like to put three. Squish them in. Yeah, I just gave uh, um, Kongs for Laz today because we're doing a webinar and he, he wants to be by my side and mm -hmm. he is in Mexico, you know. And um, so I put in a bunch of little bits of rawble. Then I found some big fat bits and put in, which will act as plugs and stoppers. So it will take him much longer to get the smaller dry rawble out. Huh. But then you can make it sticky with a bit of honey. Mm -hmm. um, I prefer honey to uh, peanut butter because it's – um, it's a bacteria stat as well, mm -hmm. so it won't go as moldy. A bit of honey on the inside, dry kibble, so mm -hmm. some of it sticks to the honey. Then you moisten the kibble put in, and then you moisten the kibble and freeze it overnight. Okay. We call those kongsicles. Mm -hmm. And so the, the art of stuffing is you want the food delivery to take a long time because the longer it takes, the longer the dog is lying down, playing mm -hmm. with the toy and being quiet. All right. So if you have any problems with your dog – that uh, are happening when they are bored or they're left alone, try feeding them from a chew toy. So it's so it, it's incredibly easy and uh, works really and well. And it does, you know, other things as well. It teaches engagement that um, that like with uh, you know Laz here, he is now chew toy crazy. Mm -hmm. And at times when I want to work, I just say, you know, play with the toy, Laz. And he keeps bringing them to me. Uh -huh. Well, I don't take them indoors because then he wants me to throw them. But then we go outside and I throw the toys, not the Kong because it will bounce in weird directions and I don't want him to run in anything because he's a high-speed dog. But I'll, uh, say, throw a Frisbee. or a, And he's so used to fetching, uh -huh. now he brings back Frisbees and tug toys. Mm -hmm. And then we have a little game of tug. Mm -hmm. And so he's focused on me, which is cool. To, you know, when you're living with the dog, but not cool at times like this, where I say, no, you guys need to be in the kitchen mm -hmm. because we got hardwood floors, and every time they drop a toy, it reverberates <laughs> throughout the house. All right. Well, myth two, exercise two. Are you ready for myth three? You guys ready for myth three? Can't remember what myth three was. Oh, I'm hoping there's going to be a lot of food stuff to Oh, yeah, out. I remember myth three. I mean, it's a classic. My dog can't be trained. Oh, have I mean, you have you heard that before? Yeah, these are the blamers, and um, they're really excuses. You know, what, what are they? Wrote a few down. My dog's too old. He's too young. He's sick. He's handicapped. He's 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 the wrong breed. You know, mm -hmm. he's reactive. He's not food motivated. My husband's ruining the training. And my all time favorite was. Um, my dog ate the homework. <laughs> Someone came back to puppy class. That's why my dog can't be trained. To and and the these are, they're really just knee-jerk excuses not to train. And I don't mean this in, in a, a sort of malevolent or bad way. It's just the owners don't know how. Uh -huh. They don't know how easy it is. Okay, so if the myth is my dog can't be trained, I'm going to hazard a guess and say <laughs> all dogs can't be trained. <laughs> Damn right. <laughs> Damn right. Did I get one? Yeah. Woo. What, 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 what? <laughs> oh, we did a fist bumping. We don't oh, shake hands. Um, right. Not only Here we go. Every can dog. every dog be trained, 
um, every dog deserves to be trained. Mm. It's, um, you know, think about it. Dog ownership is all about the relationship. Mm-hmm. Um, you go, you can't really have a deep, enduring relationship unless there's good communication. Mm-hmm. And that, to me, is what training is all about. First, good communication so the dog knows what to do. Then good motivation so the dog wants to do what you want him to do. Mm-hmm. Training. All right. So... I mean, all dogs can be trained. All dogs should be trained. Have you ever had a situation where you questioned that, where you're like, ah, maybe I can't, I can't work with a situation. I can't work with this dog. Um, I have actually, um, back to Japan again, that, um, when I did my TV series in England, we did one season on aggression mm-hmm. and we did what I call a growl class. And mm-hmm. a growl class is you select dogs, uh, reactive dogs, dog, dog, reactive dogs, but only ones that have been involved in a fight and never harmed another dog. So okay. the test of safeness is they had an all out. <laughs> and when the first stops flying, neither dog is harmed. So I can't take a dog that doesn't have bite ambition towards other dogs. It would be irresponsible and dangerous. Mm -hmm. So I'm talking here about 99.5% of reactive dogs here. They're all reactive. They're noisy. It's scary. But they aren't dangerous. And Mm -hmm. the test of this is they've been involved in many fights. No doubt. So we test the bite-fight ratio. Mm -hmm. And so... When I was in Japan, they, they saw this video and said, oh, we want to do a growl class here. So I said, well, fine. So they set it up for me. So I turned up to train this class. And it was just a one-off, two-hour-long class. They've got 42 dogs, uh-huh. all reactive. And, and one was a human biter. I had to excuse him. Um, and I would say of the 42 dogs, 38 comprised <laughs> They were all little, and they were miniature Dachshunds, Yorkies, and Chihuahuas. Uh-huh. And I thought, oh, my word. And so I thought, well, we're not going to do this off-leash. <laughs> I mean, you, I can't control right. <clears throat> 42 dogs. So we'll do it on-leash, which is what most people in Japan want anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, the only time they're off-leash is when they go to the dog park. So it's walking the dog on-leash. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we had them off leash and, and basically what we did was it's a process called all and none reward training, which, um, the first person I like to give credit, Sue Sternberg is the first person I heard talk about mm-hmm. this, but Kelly was the person who really, um, adapted it for mm-hmm. training out of control, hyperactive over the top shelter dogs. Okay. Out of and- control, hyperactive dogs. So. Anyone at home, got a, if you have an out of control, hyperactive dog, we're about to get into exercise that three. Would, that would be OOC, OTT. Okay. Over the top. Hyperactive, rumbustious, and rambunctious dogs. Uh-huh. And so all you do is you watch the dog, and you got to learn the process of uh, representative observation and feedback. And what I mean by that is when people watch dogs, all they notice is when they make a mistake. Mm-hmm. But reactive dogs... He goes to the dog park and gets into a scrap, and they're like, oh, it's a reactive dog. Mm-hmm. And I said, look, I mean, like at one of my, you know, one day reactive dog seminars, mm-hmm. a six hour workshop with the dogs in the room with seven other reactive dogs, and they only went Whoa! once for three seconds, uh-huh. and they call him reactive. No, what about the other five hours? 59 minutes and 57 seconds. Right. You see? And so we got to be representative it's about like the dog's behavior. 0.2% reactive. So dog. if you now imagine these 42 little dogs snapping, snarling, lunging, all on leash, mm-hmm. I said, right, just watch your dogs and listen to what I say. Mm-hmm. I said, now offer them three treats. Mm-hmm. That's all. And then walk two steps. Why that? Because most people in a workshop will stay in one place and the dog becomes a little territorial. But the point is they're only training the dog here. You want to train him there and there. And every time you move, you, the dog's next to other dogs. Mm-hmm. So three treats, then you move. You don't do anything. No commands are given. and, and You don't even praise yet. We okay. just, yeah, because the dog's not going to do it for a while. He's so going to get it. Part of this exercise wrong. is just give him some food. When you look at your dog. Yeah. 
And if he's not being bad, okay, you reward him. Okay. And I say the word bad because what I want to say is look at the dog, and if he's being good, reward him. But most people say, I said, why don't you reward your dog? Uh-huh. I said, oh, he's not doing anything. I said, that's the point. That's good. Yeah, that's good. Uh-huh. So now I say, as long as he's not being reactive, uh-huh. then give him food. Mm-hmm. Then take three steps, do it again. Take three steps, stand still. That's all you do. Give food. Take three steps, take five steps, stand still. Take eight steps, stand still. What Sounds you, very doable. It's very doable. And what you find is after, with some dogs, within a minute, uh-huh. most dogs, five to ten minutes, when they walk, the dog walks by their side looking up at them like this because they got food yeah. up here. When they stop, the dog sits immediately and looks at them. Mm-hmm. Why? Because, see, the dog is standing there, and it's much harder for a dog to look up at you where you're holding the food, if he's standing. On the other hand, he sits, boing. Mm -hmm. So by holding the food up here, you know, because if the dog jumps, you don't feed him. Mm -hmm. And it's, could we call it all an unreward training? It takes about five to 10 minutes to start, but then the dog gets it because when he offers the food, Uh or sorry, rather, when he gives you the behavior, it's everything. There's no need to shape it. So you don't need to, you know, shape the behavior or, or use a clicker forever, you know, refining, yeah. you know, proximity to desired behavior. He's either lunging or not. Mm-hmm. And then it improves. Now he's no longer lunging and growling, but he's not standing anymore. He's sitting uh-huh. or he's lying down yeah. and he's not looking and eyeballing the other dogs. He's looking at you. So all we've done here is we've all on unreward trained, sit Stay, engage the owner, mm-hmm. at which point back to low reward training and mm-hmm. off we go. Right. But and, and when you go out to the street, this is the wonderful thing where training in the class is actually better than real life. Mm-hmm. I mean, where would you find a place where there are 42 dogs that are all reactive, uh-huh. but all safe with their jaws, but in a selected growl class Mm -hmm. so they must understand the bite fight scenario you have to go through every fight the dog has had but for people at home they're not they don't have a growl class to attend they could do it on the sidewalk in front of their house the people at home need to know whether their dog is dangerous or not because they are scared it's unpleasant to see the dog being reactive they think he's going to kill the other dog they must prove to themselves no he isn't Mm -hmm. if he is dangerous i would say keep him at home don't walk him play frisbee in your yard, play hide and seek in the house. That's not the sort of dog you want out there because they are resilient when they attack. Mm -hmm. 99.5% of growly, wowly, reactive dog dogs aren't dangerous. Mm -hmm. And once the owner has the confidence to know that, you know, Mm -hmm. they can much better train the dog and deal with it. You see, it's the owner's fear that's causing the problem. Mm -hmm. The owner's lack of confidence that's causing the problem. Pure Mm -hmm. and simple. It's negative classical conditioning. Right. Because what happens is when another dog approaches, the owner freaks out. So the dog learns, you know, my owner's great when, you know, she's off leash and she's good breeding, you know, and Mm -hmm. she's fine. But man, when another dog on leash approaches, she goes crazy and gets all tight and she's stop it, bad dog like this. Mm -hmm. So I just tell the other dog, keep away. I go, whoa, whoa, stay back. She's unstable. Uh You know, she's dangerous, you know. And and so once we've got given confidence to the owners, the the problem just becomes a Mm non-problem. All right. So. Uh, exercise three, all or none reward training. Very simple. If you have a reactive dog or even just, it doesn't have to be a reactive dog, just be an out of control dog. And this is the exercise the for you. The whole point is this is what's missing from training. This is an exercise that should have been started in your kitchen, but it's carried on from puppyhood through adolescence. Uh-huh. But what happens is people, when they walk their little puppy, he's so cute and he's friendly and confident as they should be because the fear stage or phase of development, the avoidance stage hasn't yet come. That uh-huh. starts about five to eight months. And whatever their puppy does that's good, they ignore it. Uh-huh. The puppy sees children, the puppy sees another dog, you know, everything they ignore right. or they show fear over their puppy. If he meets an adult dog that they aren't sure about, mm-hmm. they never praise it. Mm-hmm. They never praise it mm-hmm. that when you're walking the puppy or, or whether you're having people coming to your house. So every stranger that comes in, 
good dog. And now the strangers bring a dog because you know those dogs, you know they're friendly. Mm -hmm. And when your puppy sees it, you say, hey, puppy, that's a dog. Treat, mm -hmm. treat, treat, treat. On the street, every time a dog approaches, look, there's a cookie dog. Treat, yeah. treat, treat. Then this doesn't develop. Yeah. And it's probably, for me, the biggest shame in dog ownership that people allow their dogs to become dog-dog reactive because no one told them. Mm -hmm. You classically condition dogs to dogs from the beginning, and it never stops. Mm -hmm. Once you've got your dog that's three years old, I would say, you're there. Mm -hmm. But even so, when they become geriatric, they get a bit grumpy again. Yeah. So, you know, you'll notice with Zuzu, whenever she meets another dog, I praise her. Mm -hmm. And sometimes stupidly, and I don't care. She's friendly mm -hmm. to everything, and I want her to remain that way because she's a big black dog and kind of scary looking yeah. the speed she approaches. And if anything goes wrong, my street cred will tumble. Mm -hmm. Well, Dr. Dunbar's dog attacks puppies, you know. <laughs> And so I, it's where I practice what I preach, but I do it for the dog too. I think the greatest joy you can give to a dog is confidence to go through life with people mm -hmm. and having to meet unfamiliar dogs every day because mm -hmm. that wouldn't happen in the wild. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there we go, folks. All right. All or none reward training. You can yeah. do it at home today. So that's exercise three, um, which... That's uh, those are our three myths and our three exercises. If uh, if you've never used any of Dr. Dunbar's techniques before, I could understand maybe this was, you know, a lot of information to take in at once. Um, is anyone out there interested in learning more? You know, we actually we put together a little special offer. Um, I'm wondering, would you guys like to hear about that special offer today? What do you think, Dan? I would say so. I want to hear about it. I want to know. About it. I want to know what curious? you come up with, right? Okay, it well, changes every time. We yeah. put together something new um, because we really wanted to put together something for the regular dog owners. That would be get them training as soon as possible. So we have developed the Dunbar's Dog Training Masterclass. And the idea here was we uh, we went through all of the uh, the videos and articles and all the content Ian's made over over years and years. And we picked the best of the best. And we put it all together into a streamlined course, nice and curated, uh, speaking to the problems that dog owners have with their dogs. Um, using, you know, the science-based, reward-based, fun and games methods we've been talking about here. So it's all enjoyable. It's all effective. It's all easy. And, uh, the, and quick. The, it's been designed right to get quick results. It's been designed for you to uh, take the course quickly and start training quickly and start getting results quickly. That's and, actually, uh, a, I mean, that's a pretty cool concept that I, I think our biggest failing is on our various websites. We just have much too much information mm -hmm. and it's free information and people can't find what they want. So coming out and it's what we need to do to go through and find yeah, so the this best is, of the best. It's streamlined. That's, that's yeah. the, the core of the point here. And uh, save the owner's time from having to listen to me for hours to find the solution to the very problem. entertaining <laughs> to hear you talk. But uh, sometimes it can be <laughs> lengthy. Uh, so that so with that in mind, we wanted to kind of meet owners, wanted to meet you guys where you are. And a lot of you already have dogs and those dogs <clears throat> already have problems. So we wanted to help you resolve those problems as quickly as possible. So in order to do that, we had to figure out what were the most common problems. So. We asked our fans to try and find out what are the most common dog behavior Barking. problems. Barking was at the yeah. top of the list. Then you've got you jumping up, <laughs> not coming when called. You should have let, just let me. Yeah, I could have guessed them. Actually, they were going to be my first. Survey place. says style. Yeah. Pulling on leash, reactivity, separation anxiety. These are the most yeah. common ones. So these yeah. are the ones that we, we built big modules for in this master class um, to try and get you... Uh, quick solutions. And these are incredibly predictable. These are, these are, as you said, you've heard these problems before, right? Once or twice. Right. And the, the solutions are relatively easy. So we focused on these core ones, but this is not it. This is, these are the most important ones. We also um, came up with a number of other ones. You got hyperactivity, house training, destructive chewing, lure reward training, uh, phasing out food lures and, uh, some cool tricks like uh, the ultra super sit, things like that, that aren't, you know, contained in these core courses. But um, before we go on more length, 
go into into more detail about this this special offer today. I did want to uh, share some testimonials, some nice videos that um, some people uh, recorded for us, people who have uh, been using Dr. Dunbar's methods, people who maybe before uh, weren't using the best methods, and then they they came around to to start using what what uh, you've been teaching. So let's cue that up. Hopefully soon. I just started working with dogs and the problem was it didn't really sit well for me. I, I didn't really, it just felt like this wasn't, I felt like there's got to be a better way. I wasn't seeing the results that I thought I should. So I started to do a little bit more research and I went online and I started Googling dog behavior and one name kept coming up over and over and over and over again, Ian Dunbar, Ian Dunbar, Ian Dunbar. And I'm like, all right, who the heck is this guy? He's everywhere. Let me, let me learn about him. And I started to read some of his books, his blogs, videos. I just started to soak it all in. And the more that I kind of learned, the more it all kind of, like everything kind of aligned for me. And I'm like, wow, that's exactly it. Oh, so uh, my name's Jack. I'm 20 years old. I currently live in England. And the only dog I own at the moment is this little man, Kevin, here. Uh, we've just been out on a little walk. ended because I was interested in looking at the dog training stuff. Recommended I come have a look at um, a Dr. Ian Dunbar course. And I went along and I bought one of his online seminars. It was a three-day science-based dog training with feeling, or words to that effect. Um, and again, I knew nothing about dog training. So I was coming into this completely blind. Um, so I watched the, those three day seminars. I loved them so much that I went ahead and bought all his other online seminars and workshops and just marathon them. Hi, my name is Christina and I live in Virginia with my eight year old Husky Corgi mix, Harley. He was food aggressive. He was least reactive. He was a space starter and he had anxiety. Uh, a tremendous amount of anxiety. And so all of these problems made our first first year very difficult. The knowledge that I found and the techniques that I've started to use, like rewarding behavior with treats, mis uh, redirecting, and uh, just making things fun really made a difference. You know, I'm not, I didn't come into the dog training world, or I'm not from the dog training world originally. So I ha I just started with no knowledge. So to have him explain concepts like law reward training, positive reinforcement, or non reward training, etc., etc., and have that be my starting point, I, I think it's the greatest blessing I ever could have had, you know, as a whole. So on behalf of Kevin, on behalf of me, and I'm sure on behalf of a number of other positive reinforcement trainers who have discovered Dr. Ian Dunbar's work, his methodology, and his passion for helping teach dog trainers, dog owners, uh, any dog professional, anyone even interested in dogs, his knowledge and talents, thank you. Hey guys, welcome back. Hope you enjoyed that. Um, so what'd you think? Well, I'm glad I'm not the one pressing the buttons here. I would be disconnected now, but it was actually, it, it was quite touching. I mean, it's, um, yeah, no, it's really sweet. Uh, it's nice. We, we haven't uh, gone out and asked people for feedback like that. It before. sort of echoes, you know, what I was saying about dog training, you know, I get used to people complaining and, mm -hmm. you know, getting mad at me and it's, it's nice for someone to take the time to film a few nice words to say. Yeah. So, so thank you very much. Yes. Appreciate that. All right. So let's get into what we have put together for you guys today. As I said, we've got the core of the program is the Dunbar dog training masterclass. And this is where we hitting the uh, most common behavior problems, barking. We'll show you how to reduce barking by like 90% and teach your dog to shush on command. Jumping up, teach your dog to sit politely when greeting people. Not coming when called, easy. Teach your dog to come when called and to want to come when called, just as importantly. Pulling on leash, we can teach your dog to walk pleasantly on a loose leash. And uh, separation anxiety, Teach your dog to enjoy spending time at home quietly, calmly, relaxed, and uh, reactivity. Teach your dog to be calm and confident around all sorts of other dogs and people. And as I said, that's not all. That's the core. We also have, uh, you know, hyperactivity, house training, 
destructive chewing, lure reward training, phasing out food lures, and a couple extra little tricks and tips mixed in there. So that's the core, but that is not all. <laughs> that's, that's not all, folks. <laughs> We also wanted to add something that was going to be convenient that you could listen to when you're on the go, maybe walking uh, or in the car. So we are also including the audio series, the Dunbar Expert audio series, um, which uh, consists of 13 episodes and were value, valued at $197. I should mention the master class valued at $497. The audio series is designed to be convenient. Um, they are really cool. I love recording those. Did yeah, did it at a professional studio in Phoenix. I yes. just nailed it. And they are slick. Just nailed it. Uh, you got episodes on house training, hyper dogs, fighting. So similarly covering, uh, you know, very important topics, but uh, just presented in a slightly different format to make it convenient for people. Yeah, it's great for the car. But I love. you're probably noticing that with all this focus on behavior problems and stuff, I have. Well, that we might be missing something. What about something about puppies? Puppies. So gotta... puppies have always been yeah. your go-to thing because it's so much easier and effective to train while puppies. Well, most of the training techniques are the same, whether puppy or adult. It's only if you're dealing with aggression that you can't mm -hmm. do all the stuff. So the training is just the same. But, yeah, I get fed up with having to solve problems. Why did they go through that? Why mm -hmm. not just train the puppy? As Kelly says, you know, it, good habits are just as hard to break as bad habits. So mm -hmm. teach good habits from the outset. I mean, so it's a no-brainer. We would be remiss to not include some sort of puppy product. So we're going to include the serious puppy training Yay. video. Valued at $297. And, oh, I forgot. This time I remembered. But for the first people who registered today, we were, are going to be including a special signed copy <laughs> of Dr. Ian's Good Little Dog book. But for how many got, of the people? We've only got 50 of these. Oh, 50. So this is for the first 50 people that register today. You'll get a signed copy of, uh, look at that handsome fellow with those two lovely dogs. I was so much younger then. Full color, all sorts of step-by-step uh, -step instructions. We're very proud of this book. This is kind of our I love this little go-to uh, dog guide that really gives you all the nitty-gritty information in one well, it's little package. Well, quick and easy. It's comprehensive, but quick and easy. <laughs> quick and easy, comprehensive, yeah. as we said. So putting all these things together, this is the package that we're offering today. That's a total value of $1,038. Now... Wow. Thinking about this as being kind of the uh, culmination, you know, this is this is taken from your whole career of production. What do you think about that, that value? Well, that's just what my brain was thinking. I thought if you'd said cost, I would say, well, that's pricey. But in terms of value, um, it's priceless. priceless. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, because it is basically like, taking 45 years of this and condensing it down to something that's convenient mm -hmm. and quick and easy mm -hmm. to digest the information. Um, I think it's a great way for people to get started yeah. knowing and for trainers to come back and refocus mm -hmm. on the nitty gritty mm -hmm. instead of going off here on, you know, with this yeah. latest technique. So, yeah, in terms of uh, value, it's, okay, so it's huge. We'll sell it for priceless. Just kidding. We, we got to go with the price, Dad. So let's think. Um, what was, uh, how much did it cost to attend your most recent seminar? Um, 400 bucks. $400, okay, yeah. for a single seminar. What about, um, what about like hiring a private trainer? Let's say someone at home has a problem with uh, a, you know, destructive chewer oh, or I see a reactive you're dog. Well, yeah, if it were a trainer coming to the house, I mean, they're going to charge, you know, 100 or 200 a visit, and mm -hmm. you're going to need about three visits. But you did board and train, we'd be talking thousands. Wow, okay. And then we don't know how the dog's going to act when he comes back home. Yes, he Right, is. Yeah. <laughs> right, I guess. So, oh, yeah, that puts it in perspective. You're right. What yeah. about the cost of um, of not resolving the problem? What about not training, just leaving... Well, things as they are. You've got a very unhappy and anxious dog. It's, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I look at it that way. I mean, of course, the problem will get worse. And mm -hmm. the worst thing that could happen is 
they get rid of the dog mm -hmm. just because of simple problems. Mm -hmm. But I mean, my concern is that the dog ain't happy and he's going to get more confused and anxious. Yeah. And, and yeah, that's, I, I got no, I guess the value really comes down to the problems and the relationship that you have with your dog now. So, you yeah. know, you have to think about what problems you have currently with your dog or, or to simplify, just think about your dog's biggest problem and think about, uh, what would it be worth to resolve that problem in the near future? Um, because these methods are, are quick and they're effective and you'll see progress immediately as soon as you start training. So, you know, if you've got a, a dog that's pulling on leash or reactive with other dogs, that can really destroy the quality of life, making it so you can't, you know, enjoy things with your dog like you would. And for the dog as well as the Right, animals. yeah, and yeah. destroying the dog's quality of life. So we figured this is worth easily over $1,000, but at the same time, we want to make sure that it's accessible. You know, if there are people out there, if any of you have problems with your dog, we want to make sure that you're going to have the ability to train it. So this is where we both agree on our philosophy yes. that we give a lot away for very little. Mm -hmm. so, so we've decided we're going to sell this product, this package to the general public for $500. However, for you guys, you guys are our fans and you're on our mailing list. And this is an early bird offer. It's a limited time offer. We're going to be offering it for just $197. You're confusing me. So, we're going to sell this later for 400 and it's going to be $500 later for the general public. Oh, but oh, for the people watching today. The people now, I got it. if you register soon. So, now, this is a limited time price. We only have a limited number of, of sales that we can make at this price. So this offer will come down. Um, could come down as early as tonight. It will certainly be down within a couple of days. Um, so if you want to get the course with the, the master class, the expert audio series, the serious puppy training, and if you act quickly, the signed copy of Dr. Dunbar's Good Little Dog Book. The only way to guarantee that is to register now. Um, however, if you're still on the fence, be, you're confusing me again. Be more specific. When when does this offer end? They have we 48 hours. No, we have a limited number of spots that we're going to sell. Oh, I see. At this price, yeah, I get it. And when those spots are all taken, the offer will go down, and you'll be able to buy it later at the general public price. Um, but if you want it at $197, a very limited time, um, you should register now. Now, if you're on the fence, we are going to be offering a money back guarantee. So for 30 days, you can get your money back. If you're interested, you can sign up today, check it out. If you like it, wonderful. Start training, change life with your dog. If you don't like it, just let us know and we will refund your money. No questions asked. So there's really there's no risk at all. Um, you can uh, you can register today knowing full well that you'll either be satisfied or you'll get your money back. Well, how does that sound? Um, well, that's always a deal breaker for me for anything we do. If people mm -hmm. are not satisfied. Um, always full money back. No mm -hmm. questions asked. Any reason? But I do like to know the reasons. Yes, because I guess then, we will we will ask, then, but it. You'll yeah. get the refund regardless. Yes. <laughs> but we would like to know. We're very curious people. Um, so, well, yeah, that's, that's how I lecture. The The questions which are asked dictate how you should give the lecture the next time. Mm -hmm. So you don't get the same question asked in every lecture. Mm -hmm. And so that's often how I approach teaching. That right. I'm going to answer your pressing question first. Okay, your dog's not food motivated. You don't feed him from a bowl. Right. That'll and solve that. With that in mind, we'll be adding some content to the uh, the master class. So, you know, as we get questions and find out things that maybe aren't addressed, we would like to, to add more content. So, today, you guys have a choice. You know, you can take what we taught you today and start training with it. And that's a lot of wonderful information there. But if you want to go for it further, you can sign up for this course and, uh, you know, you can end up with a happy, confident dog that that loves to meet people, a dog that's, you know, easy to walk on leash, a dog enjoys spending time at home alone, a dog that um, understands multiple incredibly useful training commands and complies reliably and wants to comply. And I think that's really the biggest thing, the fact that you use these methods and your dog will want to listen to you. So. I think it is. I mean, I, I always get very 
I guess because I'm English, very embarrassed when we start selling. Uh huh. Well, but, that's why I'm doing the talking. Well, it was. I remember giving a seminar years ago, and Mimi was there, your, your mum, and um, I said that for them, not for you. You obviously know that uh -huh. Mimi's your mum. I, I do. And at the end of the talk, so what do you think, Mimi? She said, um, "How many books did you mention in the talk?" And I said, "I think I mentioned six. And she said, uh, "Did you mention your own book?" I said, "No." And that said, wouldn't be proper. And she said, don't you think it's a good book? And I said, well, I actually think it's the best book. Uh -huh. It's not this one. It was my first book on dog well, behavior. Well, this one is here. Yeah. This one's convenient. And she said, then why don't you mention it? <laughs> yeah. And then she said, not to promote your book is actually inhumane. Mm -hmm. it, I mean, it's that's unfair to your clients. Right. And so... Now, but I'm still glad I've got you here doing this stuff yeah. because I'm, I'm not into the big sell. No. But I really care about disseminating the information because I, I know the dog's going to thank you for it. Let's put it that way. He's going to say, thank God they've been watching that webinar. Mm -hmm. And now they're going to teach me to come when calling the park so that I can. Here's the deal, you see. The poor old dog is afraid of coming up to you in the park because he knows you're going to put the leash on and take him home. Mm-hmm. He wants to have the confidence. That's why he stays away. Yeah. You know? And he says, I want to go to the park with my owner. I don't want to go and then it's me and the other dogs. You know, I want the whole experience. Yeah. Me and the dogs playing and, and that I can occasionally sit next to my owner and watch other dogs play. I just realized yeah. I should probably tell you guys how to purchase this if you are interested. I'm, I'm not sure. <laughs> Maybe our, our uh, back end support has put up a link somewhere, but if not, <laughs> the link is, dunbartraining.com slash go so dunbartraining.com slash go if you're interested go there now register now and uh you'll get yourself the signed copy of the book you'll guarantee you get the price uh that we're offering today and uh then you can check it out if you don't like it let us know and we'll give you your money back but it's no risk if you're interested we really want you to start training and getting those results as you know, quickly for as all possible. your slick high-tech presentation here this is not very not well written this is dunbar that would be my name i mean some people out there may not know who i am you know yeah dunbar training one word dot com what sort of slash is that it's a backslash backslash I go yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> all right i don't think anything about this is particularly high tech the high tech part's <laughs> happening up up here all right there was a, a little bit of sarcasm way to go there, lana Jamie. Lana, yeah. placed your order. Yeah. Woo! Oh, All damn. right, guys. Well, at this point, we've considered the, uh, we've considered, we concluded the main part of our presentation. Oh, wait. Nope. It might be a forward slash. It's a forward slash. Sorry. That's a mistake on my part. Forward slash. I wonder if that's a forward slash. I wonder if the right thing is a forward slash. Who signed up? Was it a forward slash or a backslash? I don't know. Well, well there's two slashes. You might have to try both. It goes this way. Yeah. Mm-hmm. At any rate, we will be uh, taking questions. Um, however, yes, if you're thinking about registering, do that first, then come on back and ask your question because I'd hate for you guys to, uh, for anyone to not sign up in time to get the signed book. And as I said, we have a full house today, so I wouldn't be surprised if those 50 registrations happen pretty quickly. Sonia, for example, already on board. Um, <clears throat> but... Once you've uh, placed your order and you come back, if you'd like to ask us a question, we've got Ian here and uh, and myself for uh, how do we see the questions. questions on here? Yeah, they'll That'll they'll come difficult. up. No one's posted a question. I'll I'll let you know. Yeah, you'll let me know. Um, but yeah, we really appreciate you guys joining here us. Here we go. Rescued a six-year-old papillon and she nips at my heels. Um, yeah, so first I would teach your papillon um, a word meaning don't touch or or let go. Um, the word I use for both is off. So if I say it beforehand, off means don't touch with your muzzle. Um, if I say it afterwards, it means let go. And so the way to train this, all and unreward training, you take it, you're going to feed the dog like this tonight. Tonight, you put a bit of food in your hand, you hold it like this, the dog wants the food. Yeah. And he's probably going to nose prod your hand and you do nothing until the dog pulls his nose away for a nanosecond. And when he sees his contact, you go, take it that quickly. Mm -hmm. OK, doesn't matter whether he's sniffing, licking, nibbling at you or what have you. Just hold your hand there 
all right? And then take it. Then you do it again. Now we're going to wait for half a second non-contact before saying take it. Then a full second, then two seconds, then three. So now the dog's pulling his nose away. We will say off, boom, okay? And we want the dog to pull his nose away, and we're increasing the seconds, three seconds, four, five, eight, ten, and then take it. Then I would probably work with a tennis ball or a tug toy, and we're going to toss it and say take it. So because the dog's been learning this word, take it, okay? So when you roll a ball or a Kong with some food in it, you know, or a tug toy, when you say take it, he's going to reflexively go for it, especially if you wiggle it. As soon as he has it, you say off, and he gives you back the Kong, you give him a food treat, then you say take it again, take it off, take it off. So now he understands that off means don't touch. So now if he runs and nips at your, your, your clothing again, your trousers, you stand still and say off. Now, <clears throat> that's the, the solution. It's very simple. However, it's not going to work in practice because this is usually happening when owners are trying to hurriedly leave their house. So what you want to do one evening is when you come home, have a glass of wine, then you're going to leave the house again and come back in, leave the house, come back in. To make it even easier, so you're going to troubleshoot you leaving. Mm -hmm. To make it easier, give the dog a Kong and put it on his bed and say, on your bed. You, you get it? Communicate. I want you on your bed. I don't want you anywhere else. So if the dog knows on your bed, he can't be chasing you out the door and nipping at your heels. So it's all again about teaching the dog language on your bed, chew your Kong, off communication and trying to turn all the bad things the dog's doing into simple words, which are now instructions, bed, Kong, if he comes running up to you, off or sit and off. Mm -hmm. So it's all about very simple communication and, and, Starting teaching in the kitchen. Right. <laughs> so on the subject of biting or nipping, um, someone's asking if a, if a dog snaps at a child and uh, doesn't leave a puncture, would that would you consider that a sign of good bite inhibition? Oh, yeah. And this is, I mean, a number of cases I've seen um, uh, dogs biting children in the face and the owners suddenly change. Now they think the dog's untrustworthy, the dog's dangerous and aggressive. Mm -hmm. And I say, well, let me try and explain this to you. In 48 hours, you've absolutely changed your view about your dog. You used to thought he loved kids and he was totally trustworthy. Mm -hmm. Now you can't trust him and you think he's dangerous. The facts of the matter are the dog reacted for some reason, mm -hmm. probably because the child was poking, prodding, pursuing. And now the dog eventually reacted but caused no damage. And so what we have is one instance of proof that your dog, when under duress, when being provoked, when being annoyed, reacts, yeah, but doesn't cause any damage. So we're starting now to amass absolute concrete proof that the dog is not dangerous. Mm -hmm. The notion is, you know, it's like, uh, you know, people come up with such stupid notions about aggression. They say, but the dog's potentially dangerous. Yeah. So am I. So is every dog. So is every animal, you know, and humans, the most potentially dangerous animal on this planet. All dogs are potentially dangerous and we should respect that. And we should respect their feelings when around children, when around men, when around strangers and classically conditioned. So not only they tolerate it, they thoroughly love it. Now, if you've seen the dog snap at the child, say, three or four times and no damage done, I would say now, we have really good proof that this dog will probably never do damage. And actually, looking back at the question, they, uh, Jock, Jock, I'm not sure that how to pronounce the name, but they said, left a small puncture. So that actually is a little worrying, huh? Yeah, when we, uh, you know, we, we measure wound uh, danger by wound pathology. So it goes like this. Um, level one, no problem is the dog reacts and teeth didn't touch the skin. And we have level two, teeth touch the skin, but there's no puncture. And by puncture, I mean an oval hole up to half the length of the canine tooth. You get little punctures and you get little sort of triangular rips when the dog's teeth have moved against the skin 
usually because the victim moved. They were grabbing the dog or pulling the hand away from the dog, or the dog was running at high speed. Um, I saw this actually, the very first dog I ever sewed up was standing still and a racing greyhound was being trained and um, the dog standing still was like, <laughs> and the running dog hit the muzzle. I mean, I saw it, I was right there. There was no bite at all. And it had a rip this long in its thigh. <laughs> And and the skin totally dropped down. It ripped the skin and it dropped around its ankles. Mm -hmm. And it was the first dog I ever sewed up uh, as a vet. So, yeah, we, you know, a little tiny puncture is, yeah, it was too forceful. So I want less. But the point is, it's now your day of reckoning. So now you're going to work with this and the child will be hand feeding the dog mm -hmm. safely. You hold the child. They take the food and toss it, take the food and toss it bit by bit. And after three days, that dog is going to think, you know, this child is kind of weird. I, I can't work out children, but I love them. Oh, my word. In fact, if the child weren't here, I wouldn't get any food at all. And you, you can change the way a dog feels towards a child or a new boyfriend just in a matter of days by having them and feed the dog. And that's what needs to be done. This whole thing about using food in training, you know, it's not a joke when people say to me, I don't want to use food. I want the dog to want to do it. I want to show the dog who's boss. It's like, I just want to slap them at times. Don't you understand what we're doing here? The only way you can teach a dog to thoroughly enjoy the company of and respect a child is by using food in training. If you think you know an easier or better way, please tell me, because then I will tell it to thousands of people I lecture to. It's the only way, because they can't do what they want to do. Let's say the dog's scared of men. And I say, oh, poor shepherd, poor. If I did that, I'd get bitten. That's mm -hmm. what he's scared of. He's scared of me. He's scared of me when I approach, when I talk, when I reach my hand out, when I touch him. But with food, we can solve the problem so fast. Mm -hmm. And this is the case where I, I go to bat for dogs, man. That, no, using food is not an option. It's mandatory. This is not a choice. And if you're going to make a choice and tell me, after doing this for 45 years, you're not going to use food with the dog because of some stupid little ego problem you have about that you want the dog to respect you or to know, you know, who, that you're the boss, then I'm going to tell you what's really going on here. You are abusing this dog in a way that it's never been done. No, you can't have a dog that's living anxious around children or men. So get training. This is what I really, I hope you've taken from not this webinar, but from the questions, you start training tonight, mm -hmm. weigh out the food, you hand feed it first to teach the dog the game, because he's okay with adults. Come sit, treat, come sit, treat. Then the child hand feeds. And of course, this kind of classical conditioning exercise, go, we go into much more in depth in the, uh, the masterclass. So check it out if you haven't already. Um, I should also mention, I saw a couple questions. Someone asked whether there was a time limit on uh, access once you purchase. No. Once you uh, register for the masterclass, it stays up forever. You get yeah. all that stuff forever. Um, just costs more money. Snooze, you lose. If you want to pay for it later. <laughs> but if you pay for it now, yeah. then you're set. Oh, yeah. If you register now, yeah. you're set. And right, I'm Walk hearing. Walk dogs too stressed to take chicken. Um, because you're feeding it from a bowl, you know. So number one, you hand feed the dog, period. Okay. I have so many people say, oh, my dog's not food motivated. Now, first, um, it is a temperament for a test for stress. I tell veterinarians, you don't touch a dog, you offer him food. If he takes it, give him more. Then he will love you in your clinic. If he doesn't take the food, you give it to the owner. Won't take it from the owner. He's stressed probably by the surroundings. But if the dog doesn't take food from you, but takes it from the owner, he's stressed about you. OK, and I care about the dog's stress. So let's resolve it. No food bowl. You're going to hand feed the dog. It has always worked. One hundred percent. I have never had a dog saying I shan't eat. I think I shall die. <laughs> they don't do that. I have had some dogs that were so stressed by their owners, I might add. They didn't eat for two to three days, you know, and it's like, you know, I, I went to see a, a homeopathic vet once when it, when it sort of first came out, what did they do? And I sat and watched him deal with a number of clients. 
every single animal, cats and dogs, he said, well, starve them for five days. And I was, <laughs> that was the everything, that was the starter. But the point is, it's no big deal for a wild cat or dog not to eat for a few days. That's what happens in the wild. You don't see a rabbit and say, yo, bunny, come back at five. That's when I eat dinner. You know, it's more we're going to have a snail and a slug and a bit of grass and then we dig up a potato and now we eat some horse feces and then one day we get lucky and we kill a rabbit, you know. Um, this whole thing of feeding at five the same food, you know, of course the dog doesn't like food now. And what the people are doing is then they tart up the food, it gets, you know, and the treats turn into hot dogs and greasy cheese. No, get good quality kibble, hand feed it. Okay, what about... Um, and it turns it into a treat. How to add distance to sit down... Stand commands. Yeah, they are very simple. So um, little steps. So we say, come sit, and dog sit, good dog, and the treat, then good dog. So I want to get time first. Before we add distance, we need duration. So it goes duration, distance, distractions. So first I want a one-minute sit stay. We build it slowly. Rover sit, good dog, there's a good dog, then a bit of silence, the clock's running all the time, then praise again, good dog. Now I'm thinning out the praise, thinning out the treats, but the stay is going on. Then I'll say, and good dog, good dog, take one step back, one step forward, praise the dog, stroke it. And then one step back, one step forward, repeat 10 times, then go two steps back, two steps forward, then three steps back, then four, then five, then 10. Now we walk back slowly, we run up with little steps quickly. We walk back quickly, run up, walk up slowly, and so on. So we're getting the use to the dog with us changing at, at distance. So that's just one way to do it. There's other ways, you know. That and I, if, you I want, um, about. if you want video demonstrations, of uh, these kind of exercises and tips that you're providing, you know where you can find them. Yeah. DunbarTraining.com slash go. Get there now to get your signed book. <laughs> I feel like we should put a, up a soapbox on a corner in Hyde Park or something, Speaker's Corner, uh -huh. and you could be my uh, barker, they call them, yep. don't they? Barker. Sign up now. Only three left. Only three left. Sign up right now. I sometimes do that's it. That's what we're doing, but we have a digital the, soapbox. People at the APDT conference, you know, the uh, showing products and mm -hmm. it's a good product. I'll yell out and say, get your Kongs here. Only three Kongs left. Only three Kongs left. But before you know it, there's 50 people at the booth. People yell because it works. Just Well, just because I'm being stupid, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Okay. What about, um, let's see, uh, lunging at visitors to the house? Okay. What do you want to do about that? Yeah. So number one, you've got to work with people you know. This is not something you do with the UPS man or a stranger coming to the house for the first time. So uh, we got to teach the dog the game. Mm -hmm. So first we do it with the family. Why? He doesn't lunge at the family. But I want him to greet people at the front door in a specific way in a sit-stay. Mm -hmm. So what you do is one person at home, one person keeps going through, at leaving through the back door, out to the street, into the front door, ding dong, ding dong, dog goes crazy, person at home says Rover sit, may take some time, but eventually he sits, so other family member comes in, if the dog's sitting, good dog, gets a treat, instead of going to eat dinner tonight, mm -hmm. then he goes out, does it again, front door greeting, 20 in a row, then they switch roles, mm -hmm. so first we do it with family, then we have a party on a Saturday to do it with friends, these are people that the dog knows and hasn't lunged and nipped at. 20 people, you're going to do 10 re-entries. That's 200 practices. Mm -hmm. And usually the way it goes, the worst greeting, the, sorry, is the first one. Mm -hmm. So the first greeting is the worst. All we do is we show the dog the same stimulus, the person, and he's not as excited. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like, you know, if um, you think, oh, sit down and watch a movie. I did this the other night. And I, you know, take Maybe forever a scary to choose movie, one. perhaps. No, I want a good movie. And so I find the movie I want, you know, and then I start it after five minutes. I think, oh, I've seen it. So that's the way the dog is when the person at the front door, ding, dong, ding, dong. And it's the same person. I just greeted them. Mm -hmm. So now the dog's more attentive, more controllable. So we teach the dog the game with people the dog knows. You don't want him biting somebody he doesn't know that 
would not be cool. So now we will have ask our friends to bring a friend to the next party. Yeah, when you're training dogs, I mean, it's a party a week. It's fantastic at home. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I think it's like, what has happened to life? You know, it used to be we would do things. People would come to the house and we would play, have charades or listen to music or, you know, play Scrabble. Or, and, and now everyone's like this, even mm -hmm. out in a restaurant. Mm -hmm. So when you got the dog, man, that dog's brain is a reason to get back to life that was fun when we had friends come round and we talked to them mm -hmm. and we cooked for them and did things like this. And these people will train your dog for you. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. <laughs> wonderful. You don't sound like it's wonderful, James. I mean, wonderful. I really, I really think that. You yeah, know? no, I agree. There's definitely... People need to do more socialize and get out and hang out with each other. And a dog is a wonderful excuse. And to do especially that. with puppies. If we did it mm -hmm. with puppies, we wouldn't have all these problems. Mm -hmm. But we've got the problem. And, and another way to look at a problem is like this. When you have, a, say, a problem of aggression. Well, any problem, but specifically here we're talking about aggression. Here's the deal. You've had it for a year. Or in the one case, was it six years, the papillon? And, well, it hasn't really killed anyone yet, so it's probably not that dangerous. But you've lived with the problem for six years. The dog isn't much different today than he was the past six years. It's just you, for some reason today, have decided the dog just crossed a line. The severity of the problem increases like this very gradually i like your use of our link for your <laughs> dunbartraining.com slash go yeah and what kind of slash forward slash, forward slash. dunbartraining.com yeah and then something happens like now the dog's teeth touch the skin and we say the dog is no longer the same as it was or the dog's teeth puncture the skin you get it the dog is no different from yesterday what will it be like tomorrow, though? That's the question. Well, if you do nothing, slightly worse. But if you start hand feeding the dog treats, boop, he's going to get better. He's going to be wonderful. The problem is going to disappear. So that's how I put the danger of problems in perspective. You've got the same dog. Do nothing. The problem will get worse. Do something. The problem will get better. And, and, the, and the reason why I, I always give such, you know, long, impassioned answers to you know, questions about aggression because it's about lack of confidence and anxiety. We always say the dog's being dominant, it's been aggressive, we, we've got to hit him, slap him, we've got to show him who's boss. No, that is the problem. The dog is being scared by people. So let's just turn that around so the dog learns that people aren't coming to spook you or frighten you or hurt you. People are coming to give you kibble. Mm -hmm. And if these people didn't come, then you wouldn't get fed tonight. So we've talked a lot about food and training, but uh, what about using other rewards like games? Oh, all the time. Yeah, I mean, you think food, that's... food is only as... Here's the thing. Food is mandatory for classical conditioning mm -hmm. with people because there's no other way for that dog to get to like that stranger who's a man or a child, mm -hmm. okay? However, um, if we were doing dog-dog classical conditioning, I would suggest using a mega secondary reinforcer um, and preferably a, a tug toy. Okay. However, in obedience, the food is just a starter. We use it as a lure to teach the dog the meaning of words. By using food lures, the dog will learn his name, uh, sit, down, stand, come, roll over, heel, walk, faster, slower, uh, fetch, off, take it, thank you. So the lure teaches the dog that. Mm -hmm. So we say sit, lure goes upwards. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Um, but we phase it out in the first session. Sit. The dog learns this means sit just as much as the food going up the food was to get the dog to pay attention to your hand but what the dog actually learned was the hand movement mm -hmm. so now we can use the hand signal to teach the verbal command so we'd say rover sit okay because mm -hmm. the dog learns whenever he says sit 
the hand signal tells mm -hmm. me to sit. Mm -hmm. So that's the importance of the lure, but then we phase it out really quickly. I don't want food in your hand as they put the food in your pockets as a reward. However, the worst thing going on in dog training at the moment, and I think it's worse than um, a lot of the directions, the unpleasant directions dog training is going in, I think that has been caused by the fact is people are using too much food and they're not phasing it out, so they end up bribing the dog. So the dog blows them off, and that's after they were really gung-ho as puppies, but now mm -hmm. the dogs are blowing them off, so the owner gets exasperated. Then they go to leash training or shock training because reward training failed the owner and failed the dog because they didn't phase out the food. So phasing out food rewards is really important. There are hundreds of rewards out there far better than food. Mm -hmm. So, and, and the two best are um, the, the, like the interactive rewards, fetch and tug, the life rewards, playing with other dogs, playing with the owner or sniffing other dogs' rear ends, Walking the dog, walking and sniffing, uh, chest rubs and belly rubs, on the couch, on the bed. These are huge rewards. And so basically living with the dog becomes the reward. You don't need to keep giving it food. You only do that when you have a problem and you want to troubleshoot it out of there quickly. Mm -hmm. And I like to say, what are you doing going click treat? One lousy treat for that? And we're talking to a dog that's dog dog reactive or doesn't like children. Damn, whenever I get a response I like, I go treat, 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 treat. Zuzu, when we house trained her, she got 16 treats in a row the first time we saw her pee in the right place. Of course, her problem was it took me a while to work it out. She didn't want to pee when people were around. That's why she was an outdoor dog, you see, because she'd obviously been caught in the act and they'd gone, you bad dog. Ugh. Mm -hmm. So now she thinks, oh, people are untrustworthy when you've got a full bladder. Yeah. You better run and go upstairs and pee in their closet so they don't see you. And, and so we phase out food almost entirely. Or let's put it this way. We phase out the necessity of food for obedience training or teaching manners. It's so important that the dog will do it when you don't have food on you. What if someone leaves the front door open when your dog's in the street? Where's your bait bag? Oh, it's in the fridge. Well, that's a lot of good, isn't it? No. Mm -hmm. A dog has to be under reliable verbal control at a distance when distracted and without the continued need for any training aid whatsoever, especially including food, which is the best starter training tool there is. Why? Because it's the easiest to phase out. Mm -hmm. Much easier to phase out food than, say, a leash or a shock collar, you know, all these management or halter or a harness, mm -hmm. you know? So back to the topic of tug as a useful game in training. Any tips on uh, using tug without overexciting or getting dogs to be aggressive? Yeah, I, well, you play by the rules. Okay, but, what, are the, what are the rules? But then I use tug to get the dog overexcited in a controlled setting so I can practice calming it down with a single word. Ah. Like with Laz, tranquilo. Mm -hmm. And then he knows to sit and be still because mm -hmm. he'll go crazy if i get out his tug toy he's so excited but the rules are you never touch the toy or any part of my body you don't bump me with your body you don't touch my hand with your muzzle when trying to get the toy you never take the toy unless told to rover take it or rover tug so take it means take it fetch means go that way and bring it back and tug means come towards me and take hold of the tug toy. Thank you, and I use that rather than off, means relinquish it and give it back. Mm -hmm. So when I start off, off means don't touch it, or if you have it, spit it out. But then I change the spitting out one to thank you because it's, it's polite. <laughs> and when you say thank you, it changes your demeanor. You see, if you say off, Oh, man, there's a real tendency to shout that with a horrible voice. But thank you. The only person who could say thank you in a horrible tone was my mother. She would say <laughs> thank you. I'm sure there are yeah. many others out there. <laughs> yeah. But thank you. And, you know, just my smile. Like, you know, thank yeah. you. My face and my voice changes. Thank you. Treat. Good dog. Off. Or don't touch. So you choose the words. You don't have to use the words I use. The question is, whichever word you're now going to teach the dog that means don't touch or off or leave it. How would you address it if a dog is getting like uh, 
uh, aggressive guarding their uh, their tug toy to a person or a to, dog? A, to a person. Like if you're trying to play tug with your dog, but they don't want to relinquish it, they get. Uh, I think oh, I, I would just. I mean, the point is, you're living with this dog. I mean, I'm just going to move in and take it. Um, but you, you've got to know your dog. You mm-hmm. know that this is a, a game. He's trying to play a teeth away. I would have rules. You're not allowed to growl again unless given permission, because a lot of dogs like to growl in tug. So that's one way we teach them to growl on cue and shush on cue. Mm-hmm. Turn them on, turn them off, turn them on, turn them off. So I would say shush. Now, thank you. Thank you. Now, if you're uncertain, um, I don't want you now, all of a sudden you're trying to play tug and you get bitten because you didn't know that your dog doesn't have bite inhibition or what have you. So I would first do off take it thank you with all sorts of objects mm-hmm. and with low valued objects uh, like yeah. a, a dumbbell uh-huh. or a stick yeah. or a cong, but you tie them to a string, uh-huh. a rope, and your assistant has it. This is how I used to do it back in the 70s with, with valued possession. Mm-hmm. And I would say thank you. And if that dog froze, stared at me, growled my assistant would pull the toy like this and put a garbage can over it i remember once i was working with a jack russell and we're working now we've moved up to a hollow bone that's stuffed with food Mm -hmm. and i said thank you and he like this and that bone disappears jack russell goes after it my assistant put the garbage can miss the bone put it over the dog Uh and he says to me well what do we do now i said i don't know you're the one who's got the tiger by the tail but I'm moving away before you let him out. Uh huh. But strange enough, that solved the problem. He obviously didn't like the garbage can coming over him. But it's usually to make the bone disappear, and then there's nothing for the dog to protect. Mm-hmm. So be safe. Have motorcycle gloves. Have the thing on a string. But I would start with low-valued objects and build up. Mm-hmm. You know, to the and the acid test would be say a pig's ear. Mm-hmm. When you can say off, take it. Thank you. And the dog gives you back a pig's ear without mm-hmm. eating it that quickly. You, you've got a good, good dog. All right. I think we got time for a couple more questions here. Yeah. I'm exhausted. Uh, make sure guys, if you want to get your book that you get on there soon, because they are coming in. Registrations are coming quick and we won't have many left for long. And as I said, this price could come down as early as tonight. So if you are interested, go register now. We'll take two more questions. Oh, my what? mum too. Hashtag British mothers. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's see. Good question. <laughs> but mm. she was lovely. Mm. Uh, not interested in food. Talked about that. Uh, oh, bark and shush. Oh yeah, that was uh, saw someone else talking about like yeah, is that the, is, easy. is uh, stuffing a chew toy the only way to deal with um, barking? No, no, no. That uh, stuffing the chew toy is to reduce the number of daily barks. And what we found was, um, and I developed a couple of things: a computer, and uh, we used to have the activity barking counter. So I know the number of barks per day. Number one, you need good data. Then we changed feeding to feeding only from Kongs. Within 24 hours, the number of barks was decimated. So I mean that drop from, say, 1,100 to 110 just by changing the feeding. That just brings down that mindless recreation barking that drives neighbors mad. Mm-hmm. We move on to the next step. We're now going to teach the dog to shush on cue. And, of course, before you teach shush, you want to teach the dog to bark on cue. Why? Otherwise, you'll only be training the dog when he's excited and barking at the doorbell. So it's basically the one, two, three, four of lure reward training. You need an accomplice outside. Number one, you say, Rover, speak. Number two, the accomplice rings the doorbell. Ding, dong, ding, dong. Number three, the dog barks. Number four, you praise. This in itself surprises a lot of dogs. Like, wow, he's happy that I'm barking today. Mm -hmm. And then you say, Rover, shush. Number one. Number two, you hold a bit of food under his nose, but don't give it. So he sniffs. And therefore, number three, stops barking. So number four, you praise. Good shush one, good shush two, good shush three, treat. And we do it again. Woof, one, two, three, four. Shush, one, two, three, four. But increasing the shush time by a second each repetition. So now it's shush four, nine, 
good shush is. Good shush one, good shush two, good shush three. Give the treat. Once you get up to 10, you're pretty much there. Now, I will say um, a lot of people just have a knee-jerk reaction to that and say, but aren't you encouraging him for barking? Um, actually, no. Um, right from the outset, the way that rewards and punishments work is they reward what just happened. And the decay in the reinforcing value is like this. So what immediately happened is rewarded this much. What happened half a second ago that much. One second ago, two seconds, three, four. And so I should have done it the other way, shouldn't I, for the graph decay. Yeah, we normally do it that way. Ooh, that's great. I can draw graphs, you see. I don't rely on fancy High tech media. Yeah. Um, and so right from the very first trial, though, um, you rewarded the dog for stopping barking more than barking. Mm -hmm. You rewarded the dog for being quiet for the third second, the second second, the first second, for stopping barking, for barking. So maybe you rewarded the dog a little bit for barking, but you rewarded the dog this much for not barking, this much. For some, okay? So that's point number one. Um, but point number two is I always start off um, basically, a reward or a punishment can only affect stuff that's happened within the past three seconds if language is not attached to it. Like I could say to a child, right, you're going to bed early tonight because you did this when you got up this morning. And they would at least understand why they're being punished. Now, it wouldn't work. The child would still think you're a big blue meanie, but there we go. But the effects, the, the effect of a reward or punishment pretty much only goes back three seconds in time. So what do they do from the first time? Remember, one shush, two food on the nose. Good shush one, good shush two, good shush three. So, so from the very first trial, I only rewarded stopping barking and silence. I didn't reinforce any of the barking at all. So we do this and we just practice the woof shush um, routine uh, repetitively first by the front door, then by the back door, and then maybe in the yard, then on walks. And you've got actually a pretty useful dog there now, one that will alert on cue. And, um, you know, but he's only going to bark. He's not going to bite me one. But a single woof from a dog, man, it's the, the best deterrent uh -huh. I know. All right. Time for one last question. Speaking of uh, teaching shush on cue. That is, of course, included in the master class. So, uh, uh, <laughs> we gotta, just, you are relentless, Jamie. Relentless. Um, what about resource guarding the owner? What about someone who's protective of their uh, dog that um, tries to protect their owner from other people? I mean, this is or, a real subjective view, like he's trying to resource guard me. No, he's growling. Um, maybe growling at another dog, maybe growling at an owner. I would just give the dog a timeout. So your first advice is, so, what is the behavior that you don't like? Not what is the yeah reason they're doing it? And I, I would just, number one, if the dog were growling, I would say, hey, Robert, shush. This is pathetic. If the dog growled again, i say, get out of the room. Out. Hockey penalty. Mm -hmm. So you can't guard me now. So I'm in here with the other dog, or I'm in here with my human friend, you're out of the room because of unacceptable behavior. You know, it's not unacceptable that maybe you felt stressed and you growled, but once you've trained to shush, you should be quiet. Um, but what do most owners do? They train the dog to do that. <laughs> this, is, this is not that the dog feels the need to protect you. This is the fact you have trained the dog to do this and you've always reinforced the dog when he does. Oh, no, shush, it's okay. You've always touched the dog. And you've always talked in this silly sort of reassuring, no, no, shush, shush, shush. it's okay, it's all right, it's okay, good mm -hmm. dog. No. We say, Rover, listen to my voice. So you you growled, Jamie. <laughs> Rover, shush. <laughs> Outside, get out. <laughs> you see the difference that I say, Rover, shush. Now, this time he's going to get it because he says, Rover, shush. He doesn't stop, he growled. So outside, outside. I'm not shouting at him in his face. I'm outside. I want, like, I'm firm. You are leaving the room. So he has to know what outside means before you can issue it in a command. So I would practice outside, inside at the door. Kibble. Inside. Outside. Outside. Outside again. 
inside so the dog learns the meaning of the words inside and outside mm -hmm. however if he growls this time respond when i say shush so <laughs> rover shush there's a good dog oh who's a good dog yeah mummy likes you. you 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 get it and they just learn so quickly so keep your hands off the dog walk away right it seems like that plays into what you're saying about people accidentally training the opposite of what they want yeah it's not it's not really gar uh, guarding their owner it's that their owner has been reinforcing their growling it's perhaps yeah, it's like they come up with a completely unsubstantiated reason why the dog's doing this, an etiology. Just say, well, he's guarding me, he's protecting me, with no proof whatsoever. Mm -hmm. What we have is your dog growls when people approach. Maybe it's nothing to do with you. He just doesn't like people approaching mm -hmm. him. He's not guarding you. He's next to you because he likes you. But then this person's approaching him. You see, there's so many different interpretations of why the dog's doing it, but I don't care. What I want is the dog to stop, not because I tell him to, but because he no longer wants to, because he's totally cool about people sharing you, and he's cool about people approaching him. Mm -hmm. You get it? So let's just control the behavior by communicating to the dog. All right. That's going to be it. I eh? think that's it. I, um, need, I need more coffee, enough of this... Uh, Thank you guys very much for joining us. We know that. Yeah, was, uh, I really enjoyed it. There were loads of you. Yeah. Oh, I don't know how many we got left, but uh, still quite a few of you guys hanging on. Yeah. Well, uh, as it's been I said, a long time, I know. If you're thinking about registering, do it now. Don't wait. You can always uh, get your money back if you don't like it, but um, this opportunity will be disappearing soon. So thank you guys very much for joining us. Thank you, Jamie. And thank you, everybody. Ciao. Bye bye. Bye.